In 2003, Sebastien Foucault led a small group of French freerunners on an extraordinary journey across the rooftops of London's most famous landmarks. Since then, the interest in the extreme sport of parkour, or freerunning, has exploded. This year, he's coming back to London to begin a new journey across some of the UK's biggest and most iconic locations. But this time, he'll be joined along the journey by some of the British newcomers to the sport. Together, they'll jump Britain. When parkour came to the attention of a worldwide audience, few believed it was anything more than a spectacle of men jumping from rooftop to rooftop. But the appeal of parkour was underestimated, and a movement dedicated to movement has been born in the UK. When everyone's going down a turnstile or down some stairs, there's always the one person that's going into that little bit faster, that little bit more efficient. There's people who are taking the inside route through a turning because they're trying to get to their meeting faster, or these little routes and turns. We've just elaborated on this with a bit more confidence, a bit more enthusiasm, a bit more imagination. Central to this new sport is a philosophy that changes the way the freerunners view their towns and cities. Obstacles become a kind of urban furniture, springboards to launch off, leap from, or land on. Everyone has their own way of moving, and uh, some people are very fluid and elegant, while others are more explosive and dynamic. Everyone thinks differently when it comes to parkour. The different freerunners will use different techniques. They will create different ways of moving to overcome just a simple box. You can create so much with just a rail, it's, it's incredible. See people doing this without any skates on, without being on a bike, and just using their own body, it's just inspiring. The internet was the most important thing in the whole growth of parkour. Anyone can get hold of a camera and put a five minute video on the internet, and that's how it grows. At first, parkour wasn't easy to find on the internet, not least because no one was sure how to spell it. It was only a matter of time before a UK website was created. It kind of spread outside of France very quickly um, throughout one year, about 2003, and Urban Free Flow was the first place for people to discuss parkour, basically. The creation of Urban Free Flow was led by a former boxer and recent convert to the new French discipline. I finished boxing at the age of 26 um, because I got married and, and had a kid and I decided to get into martial arts to kind of fill a void and I never really felt that that void was really you know, filled um, and then I found parkour and then it was. I found a couple of uh, guys based in London that were doing it. Um, we arranged to meet and I decided to kind of try it out to see how I'd get on and I found myself really, really enjoying it and Urban Free Fire was pretty much born two days later and the site since February the 10th, 2003, has had over 5 million hits. As the British scene began to organise itself, like France, teams of freerunners formed all over the country. I got an email from Easy, and he was thinking of starting a parkour day in England where English people could train and share tips. He said, I'd like you to come along and meet us. I was really scared because my parents had convinced me that he'd be like a paedophile. They were like, don't meet people on the internet because, you know, you could end up getting raped. And I didn't really know what Easy would look like. And when I saw this massive, big, bald guy, you know, he had a really stunned face. I was like, no way. But then behind him was Acid, and Acid had this adrenaline-packed grin like he'd been doing the most awesome thing all day. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is the future. Kirby was raised in Surrey, 
in a post-war urban landscape not dissimilar to the French birthplace of parkour. I moved here when I was seven and we started roller skating everywhere but the council pebbled everything over to stop us from skating. So we started playing in the parks, we'd get asked to leave the parks because we were too old. So we started climbing on everything and it kind of encouraged us to find new ways to move. Then I remember seeing a video on the internet of Sebastian and his friends and it was like something we'd been waiting for, something that had given us the green light to say go, there's something that can be done with this. But for Kirby, free running would prove to be more than just a physical release. When I was about 14, 15, I had what I thought was depression. Um, I'd been to the doctors, been to see counsellors, and you know, they couldn't really work out why I had depression. There were times when I'd been really, really upset, and then I'd find myself going out and doing parkour and forgetting who I am and forgetting every one of my problems. Becoming Kirby, I guess. Not being John anymore, not having the weight on my shoulders that John has. But being Kobe, just practicing my free run, putting videos on the internet, people know my name, people know who I am. It's given me the best group of friends I could ever hope for. In preparation for the challenge ahead, Kirby and another member of his team are making a pilgrimage to Paris to see the suburb where free running was born and to train with Sebastien Foucault on his home turf. I don't know what to expect, really. It's got a lot of, a lot of hype around it about... Um, the things you can do, the things that are, that are actually there. So I'm hoping it's as good as everyone says it is. And I don't want to be disappointed when I get there. You know? Sebastian, I think I would I would see him as the the head ambassador of parkour. He's thought very deeply about the philosophy and the intellectual side of parkour. He's, his parkour was on another level, and that's because he's trained really, really hard, you know, he's put the time in. And he, he'll say himself, there's no secret behind parkour, it's about practice, practice, practice. And it's just getting out there and doing it. Lease is the mecca of parkour, without a doubt. So all the locals have picked up the parkour skills as well, and they just practice it casually on the street. All these kids all over the place. Its architecture as well lends itself really well to learning parkour and I can see how it sprung up there. When we were a child here, yeah, I was yeah. going to yeah. jump London. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is here, we have a lot of things. It's got to be done. For practicing. Sebastian is very important in parkour. He's kind of opened all of our eyes up to what free running really is, the art of movement and how it's supposed to be done. It's not about the big spectacular jumps that you see, it's all about the yeah. small footwork, the foot placement, the hand placements. It's about the way you move. Here, it's a famous place too. Here, yes. At the beginning, it was just this. For example, this is uh, the first jump. And after, I'm here from there. Really? You can do yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Oh. That is very good. But I have a lot of things to show you over there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Getting up that roof. Oh, roof. <laughs> How did you get that? Is, that wall is massive to get up. Yeah. For, oh yes, over there, I can to show you. Do you guys still meet up here ever? To still train? meet up together? Together, to train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, practicing it al always, uh, the best practicing it when you are alone. Alone. Oh. But you, think you so? have a lot of things, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you need to be focused on your, in yourself. You can do a jump with a friend, you know, it's okay. But when you are alone, it's different. You are, uh -oh. You're a little bit afraid. Yeah. And you need to find why, and you need to to, to find the solution, and etc. Uh, etc. Et <laughs> this is good. Yeah. This is damn the latch. Damn the latch. Oh. This is damn the latch, my friend. Here. My God. This here. is nuts. All right, here. Everywhere. 
That must be so scary. This is mad. I can't believe it. This year, when Sebastian returns to the UK, he'll be accompanied once again by another of the elite French free runners. I show you some kind of my way, but you have your way, you have your way, and you, you try uh, some of my technique, but you need to find your way, you know? Yeah, you can repeat. It's a very good place. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Follow your way. When you're here, 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 here. It's very interesting to find, for me to look at other techniques. Yeah. Hey, Sue. Very good. Good. Excellent. You have a, a, a big jump, a lot of things, very spectacular. But this is a real practicing. Everybody can practice like this. Understand? They're yeah, very important. It's what I thought it'd be and more. And it made me realize how good these guys actually are and the status they have, why, why they're up there. Because the stuff that they do is so far beyond what you know, we can do and things. So it's been an experience. Does that mean we are like an animal in terms of attitude, you know, like this. This is, this is uh, what I explained. <laughs> we are an animal, feel like animal, free. This is a real pleasure to see all the other people in our place. Like uh, some people from UK, and uh, for us it's uh, it's very uh, it's amazing, you know. For me, they find some way, they run. We don't know where, but <laughs> he know, you know. It's very it's fantastic, really fantastic. I really wanted to sort of save every moment in my mind, and it's just happened so quickly that everything is a blur together with everything that happened but what's came out of it for me is that I can train now every day and I know exactly what I'm looking for. No? I have so much respect for him and he will always do something each time that makes me respect him a little bit more because he'll do a massive jump and he won't turn around and go like yeah look what I've done he just smiles and says your turn you can do it. Sebastian, Kirby and Blue along with Jerome Ben Hours are ready to return to London. Ahead of them lies a new challenge, a parkour journey that will cover all four corners of the nation and some of the UK's most famous and iconic landmarks. Easy, Bam and many of the British freerunners will join along the way, giving them and us a view of Britain as it's never been seen before. Signature moves of parkour may be high-level, roof-to-roof spectacular jumps, but the fundamentals are learnt at ground level. Urban free flow hold regular PK days where they can both practice their moves and pass on their expertise to new free runners. Let's go. When we first started, it took us maybe a year or two to get hold of the basic techniques. Someone can come here in a gym day and learn them all in one day because everyone can help them. As part of his own training, Sebastian is taking the opportunity to practice parkour with the British. Hey, Good. How's it going? Okay. Okay, I'll first demonstrate a monkey vault to a roll, which we will follow, and then we'll do the variations. 
you start off with vaults because they're pretty much the simplest. The role is to, to, to spread the shock. I mean, when you're jumping from quite a height, you're landing really hard. So when you do fall, you've got to spread it out. People find it hard because they're scared of clipping their feet. And you, you, you do see it quite a bit. People, they kind of underestimate it. But once you get over that kind of fear, you can get your feet up to the, the proper height and you just, it's really easy after that. You want to be jumping and try and stop as steady like, as you can. Uh, this move that BAM's teaching is called precision or accuracy jump is basically taking off of a, uh, of a point and landing on a, a precise point, either like, I, a rail, a beam, a wall, but it's, it's accuracy. You have to commit 100% and land perfect. So this height is kind of forcing you to to get down, it should be better. That was nice, yeah. that was really good. Yeah, the thing about this balancing thing and precisions, a lot of people, I think, find them quite boring, but once you get really good balance, it just spreads to the rest of everything you do. At the moment, my favorite thing is just balancing on rails and precisioning. So basic cat leaps. Okay, we're gonna do a, a stationary 240 takeoff here. Um, have your hands focused on where you're gonna land, um, you know, on the, on the bar but your, your feet kind of engage first and you go, kind of come into a sit in a team down position. Okay. Principles learnt in this environment could save lives at height. The surface you land on makes cat leap really difficult. There's been times where I've landed on a wall and then bricks have fallen off that I've landed on and then I've had to move out the way so they don't fall on me. Times when I've landed on moss and algae and slipped. So it's really important to check what you're landing on first. These are mistakes that I'd learned very, very quickly when I first started parkour. Nice. This is the dash vault, uh, putting your feet first, and it was actually invented, uh, well, we first saw it in this gym. Uh, oh, it's, um, it's good for getting over low things, because you have to basically jump over the whole thing and go over it in a sort of sitting position. And if it's just a railing, you've got to trust your peripheral vision and kind of hope that you get it there, otherwise you end up sitting on the floor. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff you can do in here which you can't do outside. Obviously, because it's, you know, it's all padded everywhere, you've got a sprung floor as well. This is just to practice things you've always wanted to try. And more important than anything here at the moment is about being confident in yourself and freeing your mind, you know, really letting go. And that's the one thing you learn in the gym, is letting go. One of the new moves the British freerunners have been thinking about has never been tried before and is too dangerous to risk anywhere but in the gym. A combination that begins as a flip and ends like a cat leap. While the UK contingent is confident, Sebastian feels differently. Maybe you can try. No. <laughs> I think it's not possible. It's impossible. Although difficult, the new move is clearly not impossible, and inevitably, the time comes for Sebastian to step up. <laughs> England 2, France 0. This is parkour in England. Oh my god. You want to come train sometime? Representing This is 
is why the repetition is very important. <laughs> Preparations are well underway for this year's challenge, taking parkour to new heights, on top of and across some of the UK's best-known landmarks and locations. Sebastian and Jerome will begin the journey, and along the way will be joined by Easy, Bam, Kirby and many others. The work begins where it all started. The British freerunners are out on the streets of London. The production stunt coordinator is keen to gauge the level of their abilities. What I'm trying to find out today really is to just to look at them and, and their individual styles. Although they're all doing parkour, free running, it's they all have their own little way of actually assessing the jumps, the leaps. I mean, it's very impressive. They're all to very high standards. You know, they're, they're athletes in their own right. We can't have bravado on the day. I don't want somebody going for anything just because the camera is there and more experienced people are there. They've got nothing to prove to each other. As with Jump London, difficult negotiations are taking place to gain access to potential locations all over the country. But the landmarks being suggested are of a very different size and scale than anywhere that has ever been looked at for parkour before. This is but, one of possibilities. But is is uh, is one of the possibilities walking or running or no? You I don't walk. I'm like this, no, like I'm a cat. Not. You know. The fourth rail bridge is just one of my favourite places. It's a beautiful structure. It's also extraordinarily dangerous. Fifty-seven people were killed when they built it. Now the people who work there every day are extremely safety conscious. That's okay for them. There. But yes. we're bringing. Sebastian and a film crew up there. We're 400 feet above the sea. The consequences of us not getting it right are terrible. It's a big bridge <laughs> and it was never designed to have people clambering all over it. Other sites being considered present a different problem. Heritage sites that are hundreds of years old and built using ancient and slippery materials with irregular surfaces. As he tours the country, Sebastian takes the opportunity to meet new freerunners and offer encouragement and advice. But what, what do you want to do? Just, uh, just follow you and uh, the place. you show me where, where is your place. place. So we usually train is about 15 minutes from here. Just 15 minutes. Oh, it's okay. So just yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 follow you. Yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Try. Try. Worst case, try. Slowly. Just slowly. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. I just walk a lot. While he was there today, a couple of the jumps he did that we'd looked at and not done after he did the mad one, so it's definitely an inspiration. He's always very willing to teach people anything, it's really Yeah, nice. yeah, that is pretty refreshing, actually. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of guys who can do that kind of stuff, just to say, yeah, look at me, look at me, and he's like, you know, yeah. And his muscles well. are always bigger in real life, I find. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> 
some of the locations being considered are parkour hotspots, suggested by some of the country's local free runners. Arrive over there. No. Maybe like this. Tack. It's good. Practice. It's always like this. Yeah. Practicing. Practice. Just one, two. Do what you want to do. Be careful. Up. Yeah, good. It's good. No. Need to arrive like this, I think. No. And when you jump, don't you don't jump. Boom. You need to like an helicopter, arrive like a cat. Sensibility. Slowly. Hop. Yeah. Good. Like this. Now practice, practice, practice. Not all of the potential locations are historically iconic or ancient, but involve jumping and landing on a very unusual set of materials. I stay here, just. Plus, you can go to the and go there. If it's safe. <laughs> He's proposing to do a jump from this steel structure, which has got a sheer drop on the far side, right back down to ground level, which I don't know, it's probably got to be about 150 or more feet. Jump from here onto this glass tower. Um, run along that and then jump onto the other stage structure on the far side, um, which also has a sheer drop down the far side, but there's enough space for him to stop. You work with Sebastian! Ah, it's good, it's good, okay. Look like a butterfly. Mind your head. Birmingham's relatively new International Convention Centre offers a different setting. Acres of high-level terraced rooftops, walls, and leaps galore. Parkour heaven. It's got lots of opportunities. Uh, here you have a, uh, a precision jump. You have a cat leap back the other way. 180 cat. Various opportunities to jump off the roof. It's, it's looking good. This, this is better than concrete. Yeah, absolutely. Bro. <laughs> Autumn is looming, and the potentially bad weather is becoming a very real worry. As with all of our locations, weather is an issue, um, because when it's wet um, and windy, we can't really do very much, because they can't get good grip on the surfaces of the rooftops. And obviously if it's windy, it's really difficult taking crew and equipment onto rooftops, because well, it's just dangerous. So good weather is what we need. I don't like rain. I'm like a cat. Sebastian, Jerome and the British freerunners will be pushing their parkour skills to the limit. New heights and environments that were never imagined for freerunning and materials both ancient and modern that are difficult enough to walk on, let alone jump from or land on. It's a unique celebration of some of the landscapes and structures that have shaped the UK. There are nine locations across its four countries. A journey begun by two and ended by many.
5.3 meters. Beautiful bomb. C'est grand. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no piqué. <laughs>
seen things. <laughs> You're a good cat burglar. <laughs> I was terrified that I've never seen anything like it in my life. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic.
Sebastian and the followers of parkour have successfully taken free running to new heights and extremes across the UK. Perhaps it's only this generation that could have embraced such a mix of physicality and philosophy. These are skills that look like they belong to the world of fantasy, films like The Matrix, or the impossible moves of video games. As life imitates art, so life informs art. The company that brought Lara Croft into the world is developing a free-running game. Casting the role of their new on-screen heroes was not difficult. This is the basic skeleton we have for the uh, character. Um, so what you have is that skeleton and then a polygon mesh. We then texture the character, quite like the counterpart, and then we can start getting him to move around. Here is a display of Easy Bam and uh, Sebastian, which is the uh, latest versions of the characters at the moment. Um, obvious is the, is the kind of height or lack of height difference in the virtual versions oh, yeah. compared to real life. Um, but that's something we've got to do because of the, uh, the kind of nature of the game and the whole control system means that we really need characters that are about the same height so that when you're doing moves you're able to interact with the uh, environment in the same way and it's not actually dependent on, uh, on your height. You look really mean. You do look very mean <laughs> in the game. Really, I am mean. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair enough. mean anyway. <laughs> Before he heads home to France, it's Sebastian's turn to make a suburban journey. This time, he's travelled to Surrey to see Kirby on his home estate. Yeah, this is the first place where parkour started for me when I was younger. Um, when I was small, I'd just moved here, I was seven, and all the kids would climb up here yeah. and jump from here to here. Yeah. This is my first jump. Ah, OK. I thought that... Durand and Lise were very different, but when I saw the children there playing and doing parkour and using it the exact same way we use the estate, I could see how similar they were and that the children there had grown up similar to us. With being on an estate, not very much to do in the area, but and finding their own entertainment. Okay, show me everything. Everything. In your town. In my town. Think that was possible. Okay, it's possible. <laughs> Killed my playground. <laughs> uh, my question is, if you like more your city now, now because you you uh, you have a vision, uh, the, the PK vision, the parkour, the vision of the parkour. When I first started parkour, I thought this area was very bad. I couldn't think of anything to do. Yeah, yeah. Now I do parkour. I appreciate this area because yeah. I always find something new. Yeah. I mean, this I hadn't even considered from here to here. Yeah. Until I f until one day I came one in came over here, and landed here, and I thought maybe I could do that. Yeah. Run. I mean, and now it's just very very easy to do. Yeah. This is very good because uh, nobody uh, the common people. Yeah. Uh, for for them, it's just a barrier. You know? It's in their way. Yeah, yes, this is my city. Oh, I don't like this barrier because uh, it's like this. Do you understand? It's oh yes. Uh, but for when you have a, a park or vision, everywhere is very good. I'd like to know uh, a question, personal question for you. Uh, how the parkour changed your life, your personal life? First started parkour, everyone would always say to me, what are you doing? You're silly, grow up. And I find the first thing I found was that I had confidence to tell people, I'm doing my own thing, leave me alone. I, I have confidence in myself. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is good. This is what I try to explain everybody PK gives you something and you, you, you have a, a treasure, a treasure now and I would like to give this treasure for other people 
It's a PK, it's not just a, an art for movement, it's a, a treasure for your life. But yeah, it's yeah, in it's, here. Yeah, it's in your heart. I don't like to teach too much. You can find the way by yourself, naturally, like when you learn to walk, you know, and you just need to have a guide to, to say you be careful, to say you uh, don't do, do this for uh, um, impressed some people. Just follow uh, your way, follow your instinct. It's defeated me in parkour battle. It's nice to see someone from the outside looking at my state, and especially with someone who knows what they're talking about with parkour and can say, this is good, this is good. It's really, really good to know. It's really refreshing. This is very good. You have a playground for kids, and, then this is and you have a playground for you <laughs> here. It's very good. And, you know, so I can say to people, yeah, you know that crazy French guy who jumped off the boat? He come to stay with me <laughs> and do parkour. I never done this here. Maybe it's possible. Maybe. Hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. Try for maybe a little bit more high. If you want to try here, you run. You try here. Yeah. It just means your legs won't hit the wall. You get confidence again and again until you can do it on the wall. I would like to try directly. Really? Yeah. You're more confident now? Yeah. Well done. Ooh. Oh, oh, that was a down cat effect. Okay, so so what? This is it. Oh, I hurt myself. <laughs> Ow. Uh, this is rather strange. Okay, so you might want to drop to press square a square in there. Uh, Whoa, that's hey, extreme strong. close up there. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> Excellent. That was a double tic tac cat leap. On the website, people are like, why are they making a computer game? You're just going to stop going outside. You're no, you're not at all, though. That's just... Yeah. That's not going to happen This has inspired me already. I've thought, um, I'd like to go outside and try exactly. some of these things. I think a lot of people are, at the moment, really surprised by seeing parkour because it's something they've never seen before, something maybe they thought humans couldn't do. But when they find out it's not actually as hard as they think, maybe a lot more people get into it. It's not as dangerous as people think, and I would like to see more people actually doing it because I got into it from seeing it and seeing how impressive it was. But now I'm actually doing it, I never realised it would be this rewarding, this satisfying actually doing something like this. I think it will get to the point where you'd be kind of you'd be in your room or something, and you'll look out the window, and you'll see a person there jumping off something. You see a person over there, and it will catch on like that because it's so easy to do. I mean, when you talk about uh, people roller skating and stuff to say, oh, that's really hard, that is. I'll never do that, I'll never do that. What's so hard about this? You put on some trainers, walk out your door, do a jump, you know, you're free running. Stand on a little wall, jump off that, you're free running. How hard can it be? So it's going to catch on. It's going to be amazing. In a very short space of time, parkour has found its feet. From the outskirts of Paris, via the rooftops of London, to the far corners of the UK. This is a discipline that's appeal is growing by the day. But it doesn't stop there. It seems parkour is going global. City parkour boys! I'm Liam from Switzerland. Salon. We're from New York City. We are the concept of Dash from New Vascular Finland. Hi, I'm Esther from Parkour Singapore. This is Parkour Japan. Thank you.